Hello everyone, welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium, where tonight the North Quincy Red Raiders will play host to the Hanover Indians. My name is Jonathan Clary. I'm being joined by Noel DeBoner up here in the booth. And Noel, North Quincy comes into the ball game with a record of 2-4, and four, Hanover 1-5. And, and last week, uh, North Quincy lost a tough game down at Situate, uh, losing that ball game by a score of 34-22. to 22. So North Quincy looking to get back on the winning ways here tonight. Yes, uh, I was just talking to one of the coaches down there, Mark Nutley, and he was telling me that uh, Cole Barrett was on the one-yard line and the, the ball went up in the air and the kid from Situate intercepted it from the end zone and went 99 yards for a touchdown, and that was the turning point of that game last week where they could have won on the road against Situate. So uh, it was a tough break for, for North Quincy. All right, we'll go down to the field for our coin toss. That's a head. That's a tail. What are you calling, son? Heads is called. It is a head. Okay. What end do you want to defend, guys? And kick that way, right? Yeah. Back to the goal you're going to defend. White wins the toss, receives. Red will kick toward the clock, or black will kick toward the clock. All right, so Hanover won the toss, and they're going to get the ball right away, and they'll be going towards the north end zone. North Quincy will be heading towards the south end zone. So, again, like we mentioned, uh, North Quincy, uh, tough loss last week against Situate. They are 0-2 in the Fisher Division of the Patriot League, 2-4 and overall. And, again, they'd like to get a nice big victory here at Veteran Women's Memorial Stadium. Hanover 0-2 in the division, 1-5 overall. Last week, Hanover lost to Pembroke by a score of 34 to nothing and lost to Situate the week before that, 29 to 14. We're going to pause now for a moment for our national anthem. All right, National Anthem being performed by the Quincy North Quincy Combined Mar Marching Bands led by Richard Keneally. So another nice job. We should mention this is game number two here at Veterans Memorial Stadium today. It was a double header going on and in the first game, Quincy played Situate and they won that game by a score of 34 to 25. So nice job there for Quincy winning that ball game. Um, Quincy improves now on the year to four and four. So uh, they uh, have a chance, Noel, if um, Hingham beats Duxbury tonight to possibly have a share of the division title if they beat Hingham next week. But we'll talk maybe a little bit more about that later on in the game as it happens and see if we can follow along on Twitter, um, see what's happening down in Hingham with those two teams are playing. Yeah, getting back to Hanover, uh, talk a little bit about Hanover, one five right now. They've let up 175 points and they've only scored 77 points, so... You know, North Quincy should be able to come out in this team and, um, and put some points up, you know, and, and get a win tonight. All right, so North will kick off, as we mentioned. You saw the, uh, the weather report while the National Anthem was playing 55 degrees here at kickoff. Clear skies and a slight wind. All 
All right, and we are underway here at the stadium. Kick deep, and it's going to be fielded by number one, Devin O'Neill, at the 13-yard line. And he'll go up to the 24, where he is tackled. Great tackle there by number 81. Coming down there and just, you know, making a nice little open field tackle. Yeah, it's Sean Thomas. Sean the Thomas, the senior there. You know, North Quincy doesn't have that much depth on their team, but I'll tell you, these kids play very, very hard. Uh, a lot of them play in both ways, to, you know, based on the numbers, and uh, they, they do a great job. So we'll see what they do here, you know, against Hanover's first series. And it's going to be a pitch over to the right side, Elijah Abikaras. And he's going to go over to the 30-yard line where he is knocked out of mounts. He's a small back, 5'8", 155, and then looking from up here at the booth, he, he looks, you know, he's not very heavy kid, so... Um, you know, North Quincy's going to have to good, good, do a good job with containing him to the outside. It looked like it did a little sweep to the right, so bring down a second and five, so five yards there. Ryan Bennett is the quarterback for the Hanover Indians. And handoff goes up the middle real quick, and there for North Quincy to bring him down is Shane Crevelis. Nice tackle. And it looks like no gain there, so maybe one yard, so bring a, bring a third and four, you know. North Quincy wants to stop him right here, make him punt. Um, they're not in four down territory, so, you know, first series three and out would be very important for North Quincy to get the ball and, you know, come down. So again, no gain on the tackle, or no, uh, no gain there. Back to pass. And it is complete to number 88, Chris Rosinski, excuse me. And looks like they might be just shy of the first down. And they're going to be right at the 35-yard line, so that should be enough. I think they're going to measure this one. And if, and if it's a fourth down in inches, I, I think that Hanover is going to probably try to go for it. Uh, a one in five team, you really don't have much to lose. I know it, it's... Um, you know, early in the game, and it's fourth and one on the 35. But you know, the conversion ratio of making this is 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 for them. Quarterback sneak, fullback dive, anything like that. So I think it's going to be about three inches short. We'll see here in the spot. And so they're bringing up the chains. Need to get to the 35 again for the first down. And it might be just shy. It looks like they might be a link or two shy of the first down. So it's going to be fourth and less than one for Hanover. All right, so Hanover's going to go for it again. Fourth and inches. Abby Cares is next to Ryan Bennett. And Bennett's going to keep it himself, and he crosses the 35, and he'll have the first down. Uh, like I said, Jonathan, you know, fourth and inches here. I don't really like it out of the pistol. I go under center and maybe do a quarterback sneak, but um, you know, nevertheless, Hanover got a first down out of it. You might as well take a risk. You know, one in five team, you're gonna, you're gonna do whatever you, it takes to just get a win. And, you know, nothing to lose. You're gonna go for it on fourth down. You're gonna, you can do some trick plays. You're gonna, you know, open up the playbook. Um, try to do anything to get a win. Um, they've their three game lose streak here, and um, you know, they're in the that, that Fisher Division here. Um, they're 0-2 in the division, so you can do nothing but go up. Now they send Abby Cares in motion. Bennett back in the pass, looking way downfield, and it is complete at the 35-yard line to Abby Cares. Being defended down there by number six, Caleb Silver, and Silver got turned around. Big completion, and a first down and more. We'll take a look at the replay. He just airs it up here. Lefty quarterback 
airs it up. Um, Ten makes a nice um, return to the ball here. Watch him come back to the ball. Six was overturned and couldn't make the make the deflection there. And, you know, great, great, great completion there for Hanover. You know, I, like I said, they're going to air it out. They're going to try anything they can. There's not nothing to lose, so um, might as well do it. They're on the road. All right, so timeout was called by North Quincy. It was Caleb Silver on the coverage there. He was just turned and didn't make it back in time. All right, so here we go. Ball is spotted at the 34-yard line. And handoff again goes. This is going to be uh, Bennett keeping it himself. And look like it's going to be no gain on the play. Great penetration, you know. Um, defensive lineman got to get in there, and it did a great job. So brings up a second, second down. No, no yardage on that one. So nice job by there, North Quincy offensive. Excuse me, defensive line to get some nice penetration, as you said, and come up with a stop. Second down in ten now for the Red Raiders. Bennett looking, and he's going to keep it himself in the quarterback draw. And again, he has nowhere to run. Runs right into the line, and he's going to lose two yards on the play. Great penetration. I also Cole Barrett in there, one of the DBs. So, you know, it could have been a little bit of a blitz, and, and you get in there and, and you take a chance. Um, loss of two yards. All right, so again, as you said, um, loss of two. So it brings up now a third down and 12 for Hanover. Four receivers, two to each side of Bennett, and he's going to call a timeout. Ryan Bennett is a senior captain for Hanover. 6-1-190 on our stat sheet. Yeah, I really, I really like the fact that you know you do your stat, you know you do the your height and weights on each each program, and you know Quincy and North Quincy don't have the height and weights and. I think it's a big determinant factor if some of the colleges are looking looking at certain players to come up to the collegiate level to have those heights and weights because you know that extra inch on the line you're know, looking for big guys you're looking for you know a six three six four six five guy and you, you put that on a program and, and you know they, oh boom that pops out at you because you you can work with a kid that's got height um, you know number number eighty one for North Quincy Sean Thomas you can work with a kid who's got some height you can put some weight on him once he gets up to the collegiate level you. you you hit it. You, put, you say, "Listen, you're going to stay in the weight room. That's all you're going to do. Just, just eat, sleep, and do the weight room, and put on 15, 20 pounds, and we'll make you into a nice, nice size defensive end or tight end." So, um, I think it's really important. You know, Hanover's got this program that's you know all the heights and weights on it. So, all right, third down for Hanover. Bennett looking downfield over to the left side, and it is incomplete. Devin O'Neill was the intended receiver. Over there was Antoine Allen on the coverage. Antoine Hallen, great coverage. You know, um, he's great defensively. He's unbelievably offensively. But um, he, you know, number one's going to try to go on him. You know, five eight one fifty uh, Devon O'Neill, and um, you know, Antoine Allen's a little bit heavier than him, around the same heightage, five eight five nine. Like I said, we don't have the program for it, but uh, you know, um, pretty much. Allen's probably got some speed over him. I've seen him in, in open field. He he can run. I'll tell you so. Uh, you know he does a he does a great job. He's a junior. He started last year as a sophomore here for for North Quincy. You know yep. with with a, with a small squad, um, um, he's definitely matured into being their their featured 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 back. So all right, fourth and twelve here for Hanover. Ball to thirty seven. Oh, Bennett no. passes and is complete. And this could go for a big gain here. Cross the ten and being brought down at the five yard line. Dylan O'Neill for a big reception. North Quincy can't hold on fourth down. Looked like a little bit of a pop pass um, up, up the middle to the tight end, and nobody picked him up. Um, a play action fake, maybe, and, and you know he was wide open. No one was in there. We're going to look at the replay right here. Let's see where he comes from, number seven. Let's see if he's in the bottom. There he is. He releases. It's a little pop pass. Boom. He catches it, and uh, Antoine Allen saves the touchdown. So let's see what North can do here in the red zone on the six-yard line. As I just said, ball is at the six. First and goal at the six. Bennett looking in the corner, and let's see, jump ball and touchdown. Touchdown to number 88, Chris Rosinski. 
Yeah, the coverage on that one was number 11, Andrew Kiley, a sophomore. You know, they put a sophomore out there for North Quincy's, um, you know, squad. Uh, like I said before, they don't have a lot of kids at the enrollment, so they, they play a lot of kids, you know, you're playing kids both ways, you get a little, little tired. But Hanover's come out and thrown the football. You know, hey, if I was one in five, I'm going to throw the football. I'm going to have every down, and I have nothing to lose. So that's exactly and what they it's going to be a fake extra point attempt, and it's going to be no good. They were running, again, the fake, and they can't convert it. So North holds them off there, at least, and it'll be 6 nothing Hanover. Yeah, like a trick. We did, they, they did a trick play there. Um, yeah, we're going to see it on the replay here. It's almost um, oh, the replay for the touchdown here. He goes up and yep. jumps ball. And, you know, that's a height advantage. You know, 88, we're going to get his, his stats, his, um, what he is, Chris Brzezinski, uh, junior, 6'2", 200. So... Uh, looking at what I know, uh, what I know is number 11, uh, Andrew Kiley is probably, I'm going to say, 5'10". So there's a height advantage. He just reached up over him and grabbed the ball from him and, and touched down. And that's a height advantage on uh, 6'2". So um, Hanover's going to do this tonight. They're going to come out, and they're just going to throw everything at you. They don't, they don't care. One and five on the road, three-game lose streak. You're playing North Quincy. I'm just going to throw up the open the playbook up. Let's just get out. Let's just run a pistol, run, throw the ball. Let's see if the DBs can make plays. And that's exactly what they did, you know, coming in on the first series, five minutes into the game, and then they, they, they score. So you, you have to tap your shoulder to the, to the head coach over there for Hanover, uh, Brian King, for, you know, hey, listen, you're one in five right now. Doesn't look like you're going to win this division. You got to get better every week. The name of the game is to get better. You go out in the field. Every week we get better. We play some underclassmen, some sophomores, and some juniors, and, and we, we, we play for almost next year. And you know that, that's how you build a program. So, All right, Robert Devine will kick it deep for Hanover, and it's going to be fielded by North Quincy at the 13-yard line by Antoine Allen. Up at the 30-yard line and had some hole, but he tripped over somebody, but still gets a nice return there. Again, he fielded at the 13, and they're going to spot him up at the 37-yard line. Yeah, earlier I was counting all the Hanover players coming into the locker room. I counted out 32. And that's about as many as North Quincy has for their, their, their varsity, varsity squad. So um, it's a pretty evenly matched, um, you know, 32 on 32. And, you know, some kids are going to be playing a lot of both ways. So see what North Quincy does on their first series of offense. All right, Andrew Mitten is the senior quarterback for the Red Raiders. Sends Cole Barrett in motion. Antoine Allen's going to carry over to the left side, cross the 40, and drag a player up to the 45 to the 46-yard line. So nice run there by Antoine Allen on first down. Yeah, I'll tell you, I think he's the best back in that backfield. And, you know, Coach Connor probably won't say that. He's not, you know, but I, my opinion looking from the booth and, and down, and I've watched him over the last two years, is the kid's got great explosion. He runs hard for a small back, and, uh, you know, might as well give him the touches. I, a few games ago, he didn't get a lot of touches, and I, I, I was up in the booth going, why isn't this kid getting any touches? I think it was the um, Middleborough game. And uh, you got to feature this back, exploit him. A handoff, and maybe a gain of one on the play. It was number 32, Eddie Ginto. Another thing, when getting back to Allen real quick, is you can line him up as a receiver. I mean, he can, he's almost like a slot back. He, he, he's a wing backer. You know, he, he's not in the backfield sometimes. He's on the wing, so you can use him as a receiver as well. He, he's great in his hands, so. Um, I've seen Mitten has thrown the ball a lot more this season, and I've seen them rotate into a passing game as well as the, as, the, as the run, where predominantly they were a run game last year. So different group of kids. And handoff goes to Antoine Allen. He'll cross the 50 and will get up to the 45, make it the 44 and a first down for the Red Raiders. Yeah, he put his head down and he knows, hey, listen, i got to get two yards and put my head down and get the first down and get a little bit more. So um, great job, Antoine Allen. Mitten's getting back into the huddle right now to call the next play. Um, Back to passes, Mitten, and he's going to get his. He throws, Cole but Barrett. it's complete to Cole Barrett. He's up to 35. He gets to the 30, and 25 still on his feet. Great job there, and he's going to get brought down, let's see, at the 21-yard line. You know, Mitten was almost tackled in the back, and he almost may have. We're going to see it on the replay here. He's got some penetration, and, you know, Mitten being a lefty, he's got him coming in here. The, the, oh, 
little wrong wrong game here from Situate game in Quincy, but um, he was he was come, being elated and he threw the ball over to Cal. You know, Cole Barrett. I've watched him play the last few weeks. This kid's great. Not a big big kid, but he's very elusive and he can he can make some turns. That's the first and ten from the 27, and going nowhere quickly was Antoine Allen. Was brought down there by Nick Saruda. Yeah, he's the captain over there, 5'10", 175, uh, defensive end. He also plays offensive tackle, so they are probably short on kids. I mean, 5'10", 175 does not sound like an offensive lineman or a defensive end. I mean, they're probably playing kids out of position based on numbers. Uh, they probably didn't have a lot of kids come out uh, for the Hanover program. Um, not their fault. Um, Quincy had that problem last year playing out of position, but you got to get numbers. You got to get you, records. Got to get a little bit better. And pass was intended for Antoine Allen, but he didn't see it coming. Uh, Andrew Mitten just, you know, basically launched it out there and a little over Antoine Allen's head. It was tough. So it's another down. It's third and 15. It's a five-yard loss on that first down. So. Now you have to open up the playbook now. You're looking to pass now because you got, you know, fourth down territory. You could run it, but pass it pass it for eight yards, see if he can run. You got you got some pretty shifty receivers. I'll tell you, this group of receivers that they have, like Cole Barrett, um, Andrew McFall, you know, they, they're good and elusive. You could, you could put Allen out there as a receiver as well. All right, Minton back to pass, looking and going to be, going to say be sacked, but he definitely is. He's going to get sacked back at the 35-yard line. He didn't have anywhere to go. Good job by the Hanover defensive line by getting penetration and getting in there. Um, it's tough for North Quincy. Now they're going to bring up a fourth and, and long. I mean, it's going to be hard to convert. At the 35-yard line, are you going to punt it? Uh, you could punt them and pin, pin it, making it fourth and this looks like about 22 yards to make it. It's pretty pretty hard to make here. You're going to have to do something a little bit more on the trickery side. So you, you could punt it and play field position as well. You can try to pin him on the 10 or something, but you know, Quincy looks like an elect to, to go for it. Yeah, really, I was too deep not to go for it. So, And timeout is called by Hanover. So ball is at the 34-yard line. That's where they mark it. Yeah, I, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to be talking about the coaches at all, but I see them going to a trip series. And fourth and 22, <laughs> I, would, I would put it in the pistol. Get in the shotgun so you have a little bit more room to move and then roll out left or something and just try to find a receiver. And he, he's on the center, and I don't, I don't personally like that at this stage of... Uh, of, 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 of football, high school football, college football, pro level. Um, they're going to change the formation now, do something a little bit different. But anyway, that's my thought on that. All right, it's going to be Antoine Allen on the carry across the 30, 25, 20. And nice effort there by Antoine Allen. He's going to get up to the 15, making the 16 yard line, but not enough. So it'll be a turnover on downs. That was almost designed to kind of like. Okay, this will be our punt. We're just gonna we're gonna throw it out here, and watch this in, in the replay. We'll, we'll throw it out into the into the flats with our back, and let's see if he can make enough for the first down, which he doesn't. So it's almost like a punt. You bring it down to the 20, 19 yard line. So you know, played field position there. It's kind of smart, uh, very strategic on Coach Connor's part there. So. All right. So first and ten for Hanover now. Ball at the 16 yard line. A little over two minutes ago in the first quarter. Handoff goes to Abby Cairn. Abby Cares, excuse me. And might have gotten a yard on the play. Let's see where they spot the ball. And they're going to say no gain. So second down and 10. He could be their premier back for them. He's the one who caught that long ball over there. Um, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a junior. He's 5'8", 155. And... Uh, Looks like he's the back that they're going to feature over there, whether it be receiving or, or running the football. So maybe North Quincy's really could key on in, key in on him on uh, for the for the entire game. Second and ten, and pass is going to be complete to Dylan O'Neill up the middle. He's going to get to the 29-yard line, and it'll be enough for the first down. Now the pop pats. 
to uh, O'Neal. And, uh, you know, the, the quarterbacks, we'll look at the replay here. He's releasing. And, uh, you know, as a tight you know, Thomas is on him. You know, you see that pop pass coming out. Sometimes at the defensive end, you got to give him a little pop so he doesn't get a, a nice little run into getting that pop pass. So, you know, that's something you can run with some little height at, at, at the position of quarterback. You know, uh, uh, the quarterback here is, it says here on 6'1", uh, 190, so there's a little bit of height to look over the line. Pitch goes over to number 11, Dean Prouty. And maybe a gain of one up to the 31-yard line, it looks like. And it looks like that's where they mark the ball. And Dylan O'Neill is, is, is 6'2", 175. So he's got some decent height, and he's a junior. So you get a little bit more, little more height. You, you can do some stuff. On, you don't have a really tall, tall offensive line, and you're, 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 you're 6'1", and most of your, your offensive line is 6'1", 6'2". You're, you're looking same, so you can see everything over, over the – you know, you've got a real short quarterback. You can't really see over the line. So the pop pass will be something that they're going to have to um, stop here. And Thomas is playing that, you know, on defensive end. So Second out of nine for Hanover. Ryan Bennett, the quarterback in the shotgun, has four receivers – and Hanover is just going to let the clock run out. Looked like they were content. Almost trying to draw North Quincy to jump off sides, it looked like. In the case they did jump, they were going to snap the ball. But they let the clock run down. And at the end of first quarter, Hanover has a 6 to nothing lead. And it'll be second down and nine for them when we come back with the second quarter. Yeah, it looks like um, the challenge of the game will be North Quincy's DBs, you know, defensive backs, corners, safeties, how and you know even line even linebackers because if you know you're in that hook zone for the pop pass, you got to you got to stay in it. I mean, it looks like Hanover's coming out and they're going to pass the ball a lot tonight. Um, like I told you earlier, they got nothing really to lose. Um, they may run a little bit, but you know they're going to they're going to they're going to get to their strengths, stuff they worked on all week. Um, use a little bit of the height to the advantage. Yeah, so far they have 83 yeah. yards passing, Noel, yeah. and um, only seven rushing. So that's going to be where they'll be looking a lot here tonight is looking yeah. for the ball to be thrown downfield. Ryan Bennett is five for six passing with 83 yards and that one touchdown play that went to Chris Rosinski. Also, Dylan O'Neill had 44 yards, and Elijah Abikares had 30. Um, Antoine Allen had 36 yards rushing for North Quincy in the first quarter, so a little bit of a uh, bright spot for North Quincy mm -hmm. on their drive. And Cole Bennett, excuse me, Cole Barrett had a 22-yard reception as well. All right, so second down and nine as the Hanover Indians come out onto the field. Ball spotted at the 31-yard line. Bennett in the shotgun, looking down field. He's going to get sacked and brought down by number 42, Kevin Papadopoulos, one of the captains for North Quincy. I tell you, this kid, every week I watch him, and we'll see on the replay here, he's an undersized nose tackle. He's probably 5'8", but let me tell you, he plays like he's 225 pounds. He, he's an unbelievable player. I was just talking to Coach uh, Mark Nutley. This kid is just, they put him at linebacker. They can put him at nose tackle. He, he just does everything. Undersized kid, and he just goes out there and gives it it all. Uh, you know, he, he does a great job week to week, and he came in on that and took a five-yard loss. Third and 14 now for Hanover. Bennett back in the pass, looking over the middle, and it is almost picked off by Antoine Allen. He overran it, and there was no one in the area except for Allen, so it's a bad pass there by Hanover. Yeah, Antoine Allen could have maybe got an interception. It was a little behind. He threw his left hand up and um, at least got, the, got his hand on it. Hanover's going to punt here. Uh, there was, there was, the two backs are really deep here. Um, they're 10, 20, 30, 40 yards back, and they must be a good punter. I don't know. We'll see. All right, and it's a kick on a bounce at the 47, and North will back off. And it'll take a handover roll up to the 30, 31 yard line, and that's where Quincy will, North Quincy will start. Yeah, I thought they were too deep. Um, they were almost 45 yards off the, uh, off the punt, so they, uh, they were up a little bit, maybe 10 yards. They might have been able to, Antoine Allen might have been able to pick it up and, and, and make some yardage out of it. And the, another thing is, you want to get that ball in that kid's hands. I mean, he can do anything with it, so 
every possession you have, if you can get an extra extra time to touch that ball and you know give it to them. So you see what North Quincy does on their offensive possession here. All right, first and ten for North Quincy. Enough goes to Eddie Ginto, and he might lose a play. Excuse me, lose a yard, and he does. He's going to lose a yard going back to the 30. It'll be second down and 11 now for North Quincy. And Ginto's another guy who's a little undersized at fullback, and you know he does a great job. I'll tell you, he runs hard for for a small. And like I said, we don't have height and weight here. I'll predict he's 5'8". Um, 175 at a fullback position. So he, he does a really good job. He runs hard. And Antoine Allen went in motion and got the ball, but a flag is thrown on the play. And we're going to have a false start called against North Quincy. False Quincy's start, number 22. Prior to the snap, false start, false number start. 22. Against the Five yard penalty. Five yard penalty. Remains. So it will be replay of second down. So we get second and 16 now for the Red Raiders. As the clock ticks down closer to nine minutes to go in the second quarter. And over on top by a score of six to nothing. Barrett goes in motion. And Ginto gets the carry, trying to get outside, cross the 30, cuts back up in now, cross the 35 and brought down at the 38-yard line. So nice run there by Eddie Ginto. Great run by Ginto. He's almost converted to fullback into, into a, basically a tailback right there. And he ran really, really well to the outside and you know, picked up a lot of yardage to make it third and two. Uh, yeah, it'll be third and two. Or make it a, maybe a long two, almost three yards. Mm -hmm. we'll, real quick, we'll look at the replay. Watch Ginto get out here. Makes a nice little move right here. See, misses the tackle, number 12, and gets an extra yardage. So They got a friendly spot on that play. It looked like he might have been down closer to the 37, but the ball's at the uh, almost the 39-yard line. Yeah, if, you, you know, if you're moving forward like, you, like any running back should be doing or any wide receiver that gets the football, you're always moving forward. So just in case that spot's a little, it's going to give you a little bit of a friendly spot because your momentum is moving forward. That's why as a back, you're always taught got to continue to move those feet and move forward. You'll get an extra little half a yard or a yard out of it just based on doing that. So really good job by Ginto. And like I said, he, he's an undersized kid, but he runs hard. So, you know, that's all you can ever ask for. You know, you know with low numbers, you're going to have a situation where you're going to put kids at positions that may be a little undersized. And I'll tell you, Ginto does a great job. He's a junior, so he'll be back uh, next year. All right, so it'll be third and a long two or a short three, however you want to look at it. Ginto in the backfield along with Allen. Give it to Allen. And he fights forward. Looks like he might have lost a yard on the play. And yeah, he's gonna lose, a lose one yard back to the 38. It's tough. Number 88, uh, Chris Rosensky, um, the defensive end, 6'2", 200, made a great play on the outside and just grabbed uh, Allen trying to get to the outside. And now, you know, North Quincy's forced to punt out of this. So, you know, that, that big play right there. All right, so North, as you said, Noel will be forced to punt. Kicked away there by Matt Donovan, number 21. And taking North Quincy bounce. And it'll be downed by Asian Benjamin at the 47 yard line. It's gonna set up really good field position for Hanover. It's 46 yard line of themselves. So you know, they got good field position here. Um, North Quincy's gonna have to, I hate to say this on, on the air, but they look a little flat out there right now. Um, they've come out, you know, 732 in the second quarter and they look, Offensively looked a little flat. Defensively, they didn't look too wick woken up. Um, but uh, you know, Hanover give 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 a little bit to Hanover here. They they you know they looked fired up here. You know, they were jumping around, having a little bit of fun. You know, high fiving each other. And, you know, that that's what you want to look for on a team. First and ten for Hanover, and 
flag is thrown. This should be a false start uh, against Hanover. The snap, false start. Number seven offense remains first down. All right, so it is a false start. Ball goes back to the 41-yard line. So first and 15 now for Hanover. We mentioned this was a uh, game number two of a doubleheader here today at the stadium in the earlier game. Quincy played Situate and they won that game 34 to 25. So they get back to the 500 mark at four and four. And of course number 10, that is Elijah Abikair wow. is over to the left side. He ran up the middle then cut over to the left. Gets into and a late flag is thrown. Might have been a face mask, a late face mask here or a horse collar. Um, Great acceleration by number 10 uh, for Hanover. Trying to get to the outside, I think one of the North Quincy players may have grabbed him from the back. Got a number? Personal foul, horse collar tackle, 15 yard penalty, end of the run. All right, Nolson, you said it was a 15-yard penalty on the horse call there. End of the run, Danny. We'll take a look at the replay real quick and see yeah. what happens if we can. Coming to the outside here. Let me, but Allen might have grabbed him here. Uh, yeah, that that's a new penalty. They've come in with the horse collar. Years ago, they didn't have that horse collar penalty, but nowadays, you know, for the safety of the kids, uh, they put that horse collar. It made it a 15-yard penalty, so tough break for North Quincy. All right, so ball goes up to the 31-yard line. They get the 32. Abikair is on the carry, and he had some space, but he slipped and falls down at the 20, 28-yard line. We'll see where they mark the ball. He at the 28. I tell you, this kid's acceleration is, is unbelievable, so it's a good thing he slipped because he had a lot of open room to run, so they're going to have to contain this kid. He, he's running the ball to the outside. He's, he's caught a couple passes, so... Now they're going to go into center, see, with the full house backfield. Epicares gets the ball, and on the first down and more across the 20, and will get hit and knocked out of bounds. Actually, he stays in bounds at the 15-yard line, but another nice run there by Elijah Epicares, and it'll be another first down for Hanover. His explosion. I mean, he exploded through that hole and, and kind of tried to get to the outside and, and just fell forward. I mean, that's... Great run by number 10, uh, the junior over there. They got him on the sidelines right now. He's probably a little tired, giving a little, little rest for a player too. Well, Quincy's going to have to contain a little bit better on that. All right, again, Hanover comes up with a four-receiver set. And one man in the backfield. And it's going to be running back, excuse me, the quarterback keeps it himself. That's Ryan Bennett. And he got hit and brought down there by Vinny Tran, so nice tackle there by Tran. Looks like it'll be no gain. Great job by North Quincy there. You know, um, they try to do a little bit of a uh, quarterback keeper uh, out of the pistol. Um, and North Quincy, you know, pursued it very well. They're gonna have to do a better job with that. They're in, they're in the red zone right now, so the field is shortened up. So if you shorten up the field a little bit, play a little bit more tighter coverages, and see what they can do. Second and 10. Bennett looking to his right in the end zone and touchdown with a pass interference penalty as well. But that should be good to, let's see, number 88, Chris, Chris Rosinski. I don't know. It might have been a push off by the Hanover kid. Let's see what, what they call here. Pass interference defense declined. Touchdown. We're going to look at the replay here, and uh, I'll tell you, it almost looked like the receiver kind of pushed off. Let's see if we can see it in the bottom of the screen here, coming in right now. Almost looks like he, the, the, the handle, yeah, he's got pretty, the North Quincy kids is a little bit on him, but I thought he pushed off, but. Now I think he thing, had his arms wrapped around yeah. him a little bit there as well, too early. Height so. advantage again, 6'2". Yep, definitely. Um, you know, 200 pounds, and he went up and almost a jump ball, and they did it again. All right, so they're going to go for two now. They lead 12 nothing. Bennett. Looking to the left side again for that height advantage, and it is. it is complete to number seven this time, Dylan O'Neill, and touch, excuse me, two-point conversion, and is now 14 to nothing. 
Another thing, like you said, Jonathan, height advantage, and they're going to throw this ball up, and, and, and you know, the DBs of, of the North Quincy are a little bit on the shorter side, and, you know, it's nothing against them. It's just the way it is, you know, and uh, they have a lot of tall, taller receivers, and, you know, they probably said they're going to come out, and we're going to throw the ball up, and if we're going to do some jump balls and do a little bit unorthodox stuff, and why not? And now it's 14-0. North Quincy, for morale purposes, you know, before the halftime here, they, get, they, get, they, they need to do something here in this series. Um, you know, a little bit of deflation of, of morale. They, they got to get something going here uh, on this. And uh, like I says, you know, on the kickoff, if Antoine Allen can get his hand on the ball, is, is take it and return it. So let's see what North Quincy does here. 5.15 left here in the half. We've seen that um, jump ball technique a lot with Quincy going to Alex Heffernan. And um, didn't see it a lot today because he had a lot of double coverage on him almost the entire game. Uh, but we did see it one time where he was able to get a touchdown. But we've mm -hmm. seen it quite often where that receiver has the height advantage. They're going to go right after it. Yeah, yeah. And um, Hanover seems to have that here tonight over North Quincy. All right, Robert Devine will kick it off for Hanover. And it'll be fielded by Antoine Allen at the 16-yard line. Makes one man miss with a great spin move. Oh, there looks another flag in there. Yeah, late, late flag. Another thing, Jonathan, um, you know, Situate played North Quincy last week, and, and North Quincy lost to Situate. And Quincy came out and beat Situate today. Got it. You know, we'll talk Let's about it in a minute. From there. Personal foul. White 77, hands to the face. 15-yard penalty, Personal first foul. down. All right, so uh, add 15 more onto the end of that play with the hands to the face. Yeah, you know, Quincy came out and beat Situate where North Quincy lost a Situate last week. And just watching it, I think the North Quincy players, oh, we're coming up North Quincy game, Quincy, North Quincy, Thanksgiving Day game. And they, they beat him and we lost to them. So I don't know if it's a psychological edge or whatever, but North Quincy got to get the stuff together here. All right, so the ball move up to the 48-yard line in the run there by Antoine Allen. Let's see, they're going to be, say, no gain for Allen. So it'll be second down and 10. I see a little bit of height on Hanover. They, the, some of the kids are just got some height, height um, across that defensive line. I'm looking, they all look about 6'2", 6'3". So they probably have, you know, the linebackers look a good six six feet, you know, Decent size, 200 pounders. Um, so, you know, they get some decent size on defense. Mitten back to pass, and it gets Barrett in the flat, and he gets to the 50. He was trying to make a man miss and stumbled in the process, but he go get up to the Hanover 48 yard line. Cole Barrett tried to make a nice move. He, he just kind of slipped on himself and probably couldn't. Probably could have made a little bit of extra yardage, but, you know, slipping out there. We've seen a couple slips tonight, so I don't know if the field is, is a little bit damp or whatever. Or I've seen a little bit of fog in, in the lights, but I don't know if that's a factor for, for, the, for the footing for these kids. Alright, so it is third and about six, and timeout was called by North Quincy from the sideline just before the snap. So it is 14-0 Hanover with 3.55 left to go. And while we have a moment, why don't we take a look at that last replay there on that reception by Cole Barrett, and we can see how he, uh, he slips over in the flat when he made a man miss. I don't know if we can have that queued up still or not. And apparently, oh, we're gonna see if we can get it queued up in the timeout here. All right, so can see here. Clear pass to the outside and Cole tries to make a move to the inside, tries to make it outside and he kind of slips on his own feet. So gonna bring up a third and, third and six here. My balls, excuse me, balls at the 48 yard line. And it's going to be end around to Antoine Allen, across the 45, has the first down and more, across the 40, open out to the 30, the 20, 15, and nice cuts move. back up inside, and he goes in for the touchdown. Antoine Allen, a couple of nifty moves over on the sideline, and he runs it in for the touchdown. Great play call by Coach Connor. I love it. Give it to Antoine Allen. I call him, you know, the nickname I'm going to call him up here in the booth is called the Playmaker. And I, I said <laughs> it to Coach Connor last week, what about the Playmaker? He's like, what? Antoine Allen, the Playmaker. We're going to see this. It's great, like almost like an end around. 
style we're going to see on the replay here. And, and Antoine Allen, get him into open field. Now, like it says, this is the kid you want to get the ball to, whether you do it um, in the air or on the ground. Um, either way, get him some, some touches. You know, you got to get him at least 15 touches in a game, regardless of passing, throwing, I mean, I'm passing, running, or kick return or punt returns. He's got to touch the ball 15 times or more. All right, going to direct snap to Antoine Allen, and he's going to fight his way forward. He's still on his feet, and but he cannot run it in. Great effort there by Allen on the two-point conversion attempt. But nonetheless, after a 48-yard touchdown run, it is 14-6, handover on top of North Quincy. And we'll take a look now at that run by Antoine Allen. Watch it. It comes from the bottom of the screen, comes to the top. It's a nice fake. Cole Barrett out there trying to get a little block. He gets out there, gets it on one. Nice hit. Nice job by Barrett there to spring this open. And then, you know, it looks like Antoine Allen's going to be stopped here by number 12, and he cuts inside and beats him off. Great job. And McPhail's down there as well. Get in there. You know, that's that's unselfishness. You know, you got to make your blocks. You're taught, you know, so one of these times it's going to be you going into the open field, and you want to get a block from your other guy. And I know Antoine Allen makes his blocks as well, so... A real good job, Cole Barrett and McPhail, getting out there and making some blocks for, for Antoine Allen. And, you know, that's what Quin North Quincy needed right there, Jonathan. I was just talking about how flat they were, and they weren't really playing up to their expectations, and uh, they came out and put up a score. Um, they went for the two-point conversion. I, I personally don't like to go for the two-point conversion. I like to kick it. Um, now it's 14-6. It's an eight-point game. And... Um, it's another thing, you know, high school football, you got to work on that kicking, you know. Before before practice, you work on it for 15 minutes, place kicking, you know, uh, 15 minutes ahead. You know, Cavanaugh Field's got the, got the goal post, so you, there's no excuse for that. Um, you work on it for 15 minutes, you work on it during practice for at least 10 minutes with, with the full kids, and then you work on it after practice. So, All right, it's going to be kicked deep by North Quincy, fielding at the 18-yard line by Hanover. That's Elijah Abikares on the reception. And he's going to get up to the 26 is where they say he's down. Yeah, Jonathan, I talk a lot about the extra points. Cause I'm, I'm a former I'm a former place kicker myself, <laughs> and uh, I had 49 extra points in one field goal. I, I started as a sophomore playing playing extra points, and I'll tell you, it was a determinant factor of our season. We were uh, my sophomore year, we were eight one and one, and then my junior was six and four, and we had some good teams in there, and, and it came down to like one point games. Like you know, we we'd be bounceable 21 to 20. We're back in the old Colony League then, and I'll tell you, you got to have extra points. You got to work on that stuff and practice, and it, it determines high school football comes down to one or two points a game, and you talk about inches it talks about one point or two points so it's something they need to work on all programs hand off to Abby cares and it goes up the middle across the 30 and mark him down at the 32 yard line see what North Kinsey can do here stopping them three 320 and the, the clock is ticking um, very important to stop them here in this series and, and get the ball back and try to try to march it down the field um, and see what they can do Momentum's in their direction right here. Now they're going to spot the ball at basically the 33-yard line. Epicurus gets it again, has the first down, across the 40, and he's brought down there by North Quincy. Eddie Ginto on the tackle. Also over there was Andrew Kiley. So a first down for Epicurus and the Hanover Indians. Kid's, kid's a really good back. I, I don't know his rushing for the year or stats or anything, but he has great acceleration, and he finds a hole and goes with it and sticks with it. So, um, you know, North Quinn's going to have to do something with containing him. First and 10 handover at the 41. North Quincy bliss. Now he cares, slips up in the backfield. Nothing there, just slipped up again. So we've seen it a couple times here today, mm -hmm. and it'll be a loss of, let's see where they spot the ball. You know, spot it back to the 38. Maybe look like Kevin Papadopoulos, number 42, coming in on the blitz and you really gave some penetration here. And I'll tell you, that kid's got some pretty good speed too, 42. I'll, I'll tell you, all around, he was playing nose tackle before. They got him at linebacker tonight. Um, kid can play anything. You know, put him up, put him on a blitz, let him go. You know, he can take on any type of, of, of offensive lineman himself. All right, hand it off up the middle in the trap play to the fullback, and he's got the first down in. Moore went to Joss Massey. And first down for Hanover, so a bigger run there by Massey. And again, he gets up to the, let's see, the North Quincy 46. 
North Quincy call a timeout just to get themselves settled, get them a little bit of water, get them some rest because you know a lot of these kids are going both ways. A pretty a very smart timeout right there. They were, they were starting to drive the ball a little bit here. Um, give them a timeout, you know. Um, yeah, it stops the clock, but you don't want to you don't want them to put another score up before halftime. So you want to talk it over, get them a little bit of rest, get them a little bit of water, talk about okay. They might go back with the pop pass. They might throw some jump balls. They're, they're setting up the run right now. They're going with run. They're setting up for the pass. So be careful. Coaches want to talk to them. Good good, good timeout by North Quincy. Gives them a little bit of a breather here, too. Like mm -hmm. I said, as we're getting closer to the uh, halftime, 150 left to go. First and 10 handover. Bennett back to pass over to the left side, and it is complete to his tight end, number 88, Chris Rosinski. And Rosinski will move the chains again for a handover. Yeah, just looking at this North Quincy squad on the field right now, I mean, Cole Barrett, McPhail, Antoine Allen, um, Ginto, uh, Vinny Tran, they're all playing both ways. It looks They all play offense, too, so, um, you know, Sean Thomas, and he, almost all these kids are going both ways. I mean, they've tried to put other kids on defense, and uh, they weren't getting the job done. They had to put them back in. So, Abby cares on the hit, and uh -oh. he stays on his feet. Uh -oh. Crossed the 30-yard uh -oh. line up to the 25, and finally pushed out of bounds. He was hit from behind, but he did not go down. He just kind of knelt down a little bit, but a great effort there uh, by number 10 for handover, Elijah Abby cares. And he's going to have the first down and more. He's going to get to the, let's see where they mark it, to the 17-yard line. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see this replay, yeah. Yeah, we'll take a look at it um, real quick here. Watch this, watch this. 10. He looks like he stopped. They'd have him in the backfield. They don't wrap him up. Ginto had him, and he, he just goes. And not only acceleration, the kid doesn't want to go down and be tackled. All right, Bennett keeps it himself, and we'll get a couple yards in the play. We're gonna mark him down at the 16, so maybe a gain of one on the play. Yeah, Jonathan, I'm just looking down there. You got Ginto, Allen, Barrett, Papadopoulos. They're undersized kids. I mean, I mean, nothing against them. I mean, I was an undersized kid out there on the field, and you know, it goes to heights sometimes for passing the ball, and sometimes you know, one on one, you know, getting in those holes. I mean, Ginto's playing inside linebacker. He's a kid that could be playing safety. And in this defensive scheme, he's got to play linebacker and fullback. And he, he's a kid who can definitely play strong safety and, you know, be, be, be a wingback, you know. And, and, and with North Quincy not having a lot of numbers, they've got to shuffle kids around and make them play other, other positions. And, you know, he's a little bit out of position. But, you know, um, Coach Connor does a great job. You know, you got to credit this, this, this staff with what they have and what they do. They do a great job. You know, they've won the last thanks, thanks, three Thanksgiving games. You know, being, you know, the, the, it swayed more the Quincy end now with the new high school opening. You know, the more enrollments going to Quincy end, and North Quincy doesn't have as many. Um, the big thing is all to talk about is Quincy youth football. Get out there. Get to the Storms practices. Get to the North Quincy Apaches practices. You know, they got a couple kids on those two teams, you know, coming up in the next couple of years. Is, you know, get them acclimated to, to the North Quincy program. You know, recruit. All right, pass looking in the end zone, and it is knocked away there by number 11, Andrew Kiley. Pass was intended again for Rosinski, but it goes incomplete. Try to go for that jump ball there. Um, good play by Andrew Kiley out there, the sophomore. And, you know, uh, we'll Take a look the at the replay, replay yeah, in the end yeah. zone here. Nice play by Kiley to knock it away. And he's a sophomore out there, you know. It, it's tough throwing a sophomore, and he, look at this. He gets away with a little bit of hands up there. Um, good job getting the, you know, getting his hands up and trying to do something, you know. So you got to credit him. And he's a kid that, you know, they probably say, you know, you got to give a couple kids some rest. you got to put him out there. So uh, he's got to learn as a sophomore being thrown out in the mix of things. Um, I don't see number 17 in there, Elijah Benjamin. You know, I know he plays, uh, he could be a DB as well, but they don't have him out there. So I don't know what position he plays defensively, but. A hand up the middle, nice job there by Papadopoulos and also Vinny Tran to make the stop. Looks like it's going to be a no gain for Hanover. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the replay real quick here and see the nice effort by North Quincy on the stop. Vinny Tran, 63 in there. Uh, is that 
Papadopoulos again there in there as well. Um, you know that you're going to be in. <laughs> you're going to we're going to hear that kid's name all night. Is Papadopoulos that kid? He's going full speed all the time. So good job by North Quincy setting up a third and nine, third and long, and the and the, and the clock's going down here. They're they're going to try to play to the end here. So. Well, 30 seconds left. So they have timeout called, yeah. And I I thought it was, I thought this should be fourth down. I could be wrong here. It's showing third down on the chains, but I believe this should be fourth down. We'll see if they uh, change that. Yeah, and this, this area, you won't want to now give North Quincy the ball at all with Antoine Allen on that end. So they want to chop off all that clock, see if they can punch it in. They probably have enough for timeouts, 30 seconds left, but you don't want Allen to get the ball in his hands at all anywhere on the field. And that's what Hanover's trying not to do just in case they don't convert and make a touchdown. So you're trying to play the clock to your advantage here, not make any mistakes by giving them enough time to come back and do something. So. All right, so Hanover comes out. I, I believe it is fourth down, uh, but the yard marker is showing third. Bennett back to pass, looking, fires, and it's tipped at the line of scrimmage by Sean Thomas, and it falls incomplete. Great job there by Thomas. You know, he just, he's doing a great job, Sean Thomas, out there. Um, I don't have a height and weight on him again, but I, I'm going to say he's 6'2". He, you know, you're taught his defensive end is get your hands up. We'll see the replay here, and um, I think it's going to bring up a fourth down, Jonathan. But watch this. Boom, you put your hand up. That's a great, great, great job by him. And, uh, you know, you're taught as a defensive end, you know, if the ball goes up, you yell ball and you put your hands up. And, you know, being the height, you know, at that position did a great job. All right, so Hanover, I, I'm pretty sure Hanover's getting a free play here. I could be wrong, but... Uh, penalty marker came down the field as well. And a false start is going to be called on Hanover. It's too bad if they were in field goal range, they could have kicked it, you know, and um, five yards back and they don't, this is a long field goal, but. And timeouts called down the field by North Quincy. Yeah, on um, my records here, I have, they ran four plays from uh, from that, that yard area. They had a, uh, a first and ten. It was a one-yard gain. They had on second down and nine, it was an incomplete pass into the corner of the end zone. On third and nine, it was a one-yard gain on the big tackle by Papadopoulos and Mini Tran. And then on that fourth down play they ran, it was an uh, incomplete pass. So I think North Quincy... Uh, I'm not too sure what's going on down the field unless something happened that I was unaware of, but I'm pretty sure that I, uh, Hanover's getting a, uh, An extra play. a, a fifth down <laughs> here, yeah. <laughs> That's happened before at the collegiate level a few, maybe three or four years ago that happened. I think Oklahoma and Missouri or something, and they had that extra play, they end up scoring and beating the other team, so it can happen. I don't know if the referees are consult, you know, getting together and finding out. I guess not, but... Um, I don't see the North Quincy coaches, you know, saying anything. So I would definitely, you know, if they knew, they would be up on the referees going, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is this is first down north. All right, well, either way, it's going to be fourth down. Ball. Are they going to kick a field and goal? They are going to try the field goal. <laughs> and it's a fake field goal. He's got him. And pass in the end zone, a complete, and did he hold on to it? He yep. did to number seven, Dylan O'Neill. And so he goes in for the touchdown on the fake field goal attempt. You know, Hanover did this earlier, and I'll tell you, I, like I said at the beginning of the, of the broadcast here, they're going to try some trick plays. They got nothing to lose. And uh, I said that they were going to kick a field goal at five yards back, and they still try to kick a field goal. There was a great thrown ball in seven again, um, O'Neill. This is a little bit of the height, and you know, Cole Barrett was on the coverage there. Let's see if they try the fake again here, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they will go for the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. And we'll take a look at the replay on the 
on the um, nice design play here. Watch this. Holder gives it to the guy coming around. O'Neill here has a little bit of uh, separation here. Look at the height difference here. Uh, Barrett on um, O'Neill here, and you know he closes in. He closes in, and you know uh, we're back here on Quincy, but does a really good. You know Hanover's come out and played some really good play calling. You know they put up 21 points here in the first half. They don't score a lot of points. They've scored 77 points in the last six games. That's averaging, you know, 12.8 a game. And they've already put up 21 here against North on the road. Um, I see a Hanover team. I have to credit a little bit of the coach over there. He's probably just, you know, opening up the playbook, saying, kids, we got nothing to lose. Let's just throw the ball. Let's see what number 10 can do running the ball. Let's just go out in North. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's fly around the field. Let's try some trick plays. Let's get better and better. So, you know, next year we can compete, you know. And you always have to try to do that to build a program up, you know. I don't know what year he's in, but, you know, North Quincy, hold on to the football here on the, on the kick, kickoff here. And, you know, they're going to have to go in and make some second-half adjustments here. All right, so his kick deep. And Cole Barrett's going to try to field uh -oh. it. Took a bad uh -oh. bounce. And I do believe Antoine Allen was able to jump on it. And he did. It took a tough bounce there on Cole mm -hmm. Barrett. It was right in front of him, and he, he was trying to field it just like a ground ball, and it just took a huge bounce and went up and hit him in the helmet. Mm. And luckily, Antoine Allen was able to come up with it at the 23-yard line. I think the smart thing for Dufa North is just take a d down knee and just go into halftime as long as they don't get any turnovers here. They can't have any turnovers right here. He's going to take a knee. That's smart. Go in second half, talk about it with Coach Connor. Um, there should probably be a lot of yelling going on in that locker room. With, um, uh, assistant coaches Mark Nutley and, and Ken McPhee in there as well. Kids look flat, flat tonight. All right, so North Quincy again takes the knee at the end of the uh, end of the half. So 21 to six after the first half here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Noel and I will take a timeout. And we'll be back for second half coverage in just a moment. <laughs> Look at the ass on this. Welcome back, everyone. We're at the half. Hanover leads North Quincy by a score of 21 to 6. Uh, at the half, our crew in the truck uh, was able to look at the replays, and uh, we concluded that H Hanover did get actually an extra couple plays in there. Um, looks like there was an error down on the sideline with the field marker. Uh, at one point, it should have gone to fourth down, and uh, it went to first down, then back to third down. So there was a little bit of an error down there. So North Quincy actually held Hanover on a fourth down, and no one on the field recognized it. Um, Neither the North Quincy coaching staff didn't get it. The players didn't get it. Again, it was an error down on the sideline with the uh, the, the field marker uh, and the, the down marker. So uh, an unfortunate break there um, in circumstances there for North Quincy. They hold off Hanover, but Hanover gets an extra. They actually got two extra attempts. There was the, the false start and then the actual touchdown. Uh, so, again, tough break there, and Hanover will be kicking off. They're going to need five plays to make it 21 points there. So Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they, they, they do a fake field goal to make that, so tough. Um, Jonathan, you were up in the booth saying, that, that, that's, that's fifth down. Uh, they got yeah, extra play in here. Something and, and, I was looking at my, and, my uh, notes here. It's like something does uh, not look right. It's so it's weird that no one picked it up on the field. I, I, bet you, uh, I bet you the Hanover side knew it, and they didn't say anything. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, uh, they don't want to do the chain crews anymore, so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the chain crew was uh, a little late. There was a there was a clock counting down on um, on the field, and I don't think people were expecting it to right, be right. done. That both teams came out well before the uh, the, uh, the clock had counted down. It looks like North Quincy players doing the the chains, and <laughs> how could you mess that up over there? So, what the, these the guys that are going over there now weren't the, they oh, were weren't doing the, it earlier. The, okay. These are three. I don't know where the other chain crew went, but 
Um, Maybe we're getting out of here. They're going <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Robert Devine kicks it off for Hanover, and it'll be fielded by Cole Barrett at the 15-yard line. He was trying to let it go out of bounds, but it wouldn't, and he's going to run it and get up to the 21-yard line, it looks like. Hanover's done a pretty good job with the kickoff coverages. You know, they've, they've put it down there a little bit in areas that, you know, North Quincy aren't, and, um, you know, North Quincy has to come out this second half and do something. And this first possession is important. I mean, I know what they were doing in the locker room, but it's basically telling these kids, wake up, because you're getting beat by Hanover, which is 1-5, and five, and they've come out and put up 21 points in the first half. So let's get it together. Again, that goes Eddie Ginto over to the left side and shows a little burst of energy there for North Quincy. Ginto will run the ball up to the 30-yard line. So a nice run there for North Quincy on first down. Great, great run by Ginto. I'll tell you, he's, he's, he's fullback slash tailback in my eyes because he, he can get to the outside and do some damage. So really important to see what, what North Quincy does here in this first possession um, with the ball. Um, you know, I was talking about defense earlier. I mean, I know Andrew Mitten's probably the only quarterback on that side, but I, I bet you he's athletic enough to play defense as well um, and play like a safety position. But, um, you know, obviously the, you can't get him hurt as a senior quarterback. All right, Ginto again on the carry, and he'll fight his way forward and will have enough for the first down there. Falls forward up to the, see up to the 33 yard line. So nice run there by Ginto to pick up the first down. Two plays to him, they're setting up with, with Allen, you know, and Ginto, Ginto, Allen. So, you know, they haven't they haven't done, um, you know, they were working with, with Thomas as the tight end and, and doing some some uh, some stuff with him. I don't know if he's in there right now. It looks like he, Benjamin's in there at tight end, but uh, I said Thomas has got great hands. Antoine Allen to carry. Has some space on the outside. Cross the 40, up now to the 50. Nice move on to the outside again. Couple of stutter steps there and will fall forward up to the 30 yard line. Great run there by Antoine Allen. And North Quincy in business here on this drive, the first of the second half. We're going to look at the replay here, but like I said, you know, Ginto, Ginto, Allen. Here comes in off the. Off from the the, uh, the 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 wing back position, come in the bottom of the screen here, and get some running room. And you know he's he's following his blockers. Cole Barrett out there as well, doing another job. He's trying to get as much as he can. Cole Barrett, get out there to help him. And uh, you know someone caught him from the outside. Uh, All right, flag gonna be thrown here. We're gonna have two men in motion on North Quincy. A Thirty-seven yard run by Allen. I was talking about a little earlier, Sean Thomas is usually the tight end, and I seen him at the beginning of the season, caught a couple great passes and actually, you know, ran it off for a touchdown. I was like a 60-yard, you know, tight end pop pass, and he's got the height, and uh, I think Benjamin's in there right Illegal now as a motion. tight end. Black. And, you know, you, you want to run, but at the same token, you, you got to pass some some plays, and, you know, the tight end position in this set is is is, is determining factor of catching the football. All right, first and 15, Ginto was trying to make some moves, but there was nothing there. All the holes were filled up by the Hanover Indians defensive players. And it will be a loss on the play back to the 37-yard line, so a loss of two. McPhail's another kid, number 22, uh, Andrew, uh, the senior uh, for North Quincy, and he, he's great with his hands. And when he gets the football, he's, he's had a couple great interceptions in the past few games, and he's, he's great with the football, so... You know, they're going to go into a little bit of a semi-trips here on the, on the bottom of the screen here, and I like to see the McPhail get get a ball out to him. Minton looking to pass, fires over to the right side, and it is incomplete. Was looking for Antoine Allen, but he got hit just as he went to receive the ball by Dean Prouty. It just closed fast, you know. Um, Minton tried to get it to Allen. We're going to, we're going to see the replay here, and you know Allen's slapping his hands. You know he might have had a chance to catch this, and a lot of pressure. He's in there. It's it's tough. It's in the almost double coverage here. Um, number one and number eleven on the coverages for Hanover. So, um, all right, there was a, the path. yeah, roughing the passer play on the. We didn't we missed that. We didn't see the flag. So um, it will be a first down for uh, for North Quincy.
Minton looking to pass again. Cole and Barrett. Cole Barrett at the 10 5. In. Dives in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Cole Barrett. It looks like he might have hurt himself on the play. It was a great play by Barrett. He just like dove in there to get into, into the end zone. Uh, great, great play by Barrett. I'll tell you, he's uh, talking about him earlier in there. Uh, I tell you, this kid is just, he leaves it all out there. He's been blocking great for, 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 the, for the backs. And, you know, he gets the ball here, tries to make it happen, tries to put it in the end zone, and he, and he does a great job of um, getting, in, you know, right on the pylon. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the replay here. We think we got a uh, little bit of the coverage here. So watch him going in. He just dives in. Watch this. Puts the ball out there. Ooh. Gets the pylon and gets the touchdown. And the um, referee's coming over and he'll signal the touchdown. So uh, he's okay. He might have got the wind knocked out of him down there, you know, jumping up in the air. But I'll tell you, this kid, I don't have height and weight, but I'll tell you, he's about 5'7", you know, 145 pounds. He leaves it all out in there in the field. And I'll tell you, he's a, he's a, he's a tough-nosed player. Um coming here and back on the sidelines here so big 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 um break for the pr uh, for, for 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 the red raiders here you know we got red raiders and indians tonight by the way so um yep uh, as long as they're not playing the chiefs you know <laughs> 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 so um really important to make this conversion here they're going to go for the two-pointer all right and two-point conversion and mittens in let's say and late flag thrown on the play as well. Two point conversion is good. We'll see if it holds. It should be after the play though. Could be a um, hit in the end zone, and they're going to get a 15 yard penalty on the uh, on the kickoff, and that'd be a big, good break for North Quincy. I was big to make that conversion. Now makes it a Personal seven point foul. game. Defense. Penalty assault forced on me on the kickoff. And you heard it on the field, um, so unsportsmanlike conduct that maybe in the end zone. He might have hit him while he was already in. You know, he plays over. Uh, plus, he's the quarterback. You got to look out for him as well. So 21-14, big conversion there to make that two-point conversion. Now it's a uh, one-possession game, seven-point game. You miss that conversion, and, and you're down 21-12, and it's a nine-point game. So it's two possessions. So. Um, they're going to be kicking this off from their own, um, their 45, so, wow. All right, so, yeah, man, big play there for everything, and... The kicker's going out to the regular position. He doesn't realize it. Oh, move it up, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's moving it up to 50. Wait a minute. Why five not? Five more yards. <laughs> okay, I'll take another five yards. Thank you. What he wants to do here is he wants to kick this right at the goal line. So that kid has to return it out of the end zone. If he kicks it a little bit into the end zone, I think Hanover's just going to down it. So let's see what the kicker does. Number 39, he's not on our roster. Um, as Jim Timmons would say, it could be a soccer player. They took over from the program. So Who scored that two-point? That was Minton that ran in. Minton ran in, yes. Right? Yep. Trying to update my uh, stats here. That's a good little kick. Pooched it in there. Hits the ground. All right, so we feel at the 13-yard line by Hanover. And they're going to say he was down. Great kick. Great kick by the kicker there, 39. Um, pooched it up there. Um, Coach Ken McPhee and, and, and Mark Nutley, the, the coaches are high-fiving him. That, that was perfect. You don't, you don't want to get it into the end zone and get it onto the 20. So they have him pinned a little bit more. It's on their 12. They got to go 88 yards. Really good for North Quincy with some momentum here. That's a 21-14, and actually, Noel, it should be 14-14. Mm, yes. Uh, because of then getting that whole fifth down situation that happened late in the the, uh, the second quarter. Handoff's gonna go to number 10. It looks like. That's uh, Elijah Abikares. Great play by Thomas there. He got his hand in there on his shirt and wait for the other Red Raiders to get in there, and uh, that's important. you got to put a hand out there and at least slow him down. Um, he's got great acceleration, and he's, he's been killing them the first half, so they're going to contain him second half. Um, they, they're looking to have some good adjustments here. Key in on number 10. Double tight eye formation here. 
Looking to pass, and he's going to run it himself. And nice job by North Quincy to come up and bring him down. That's the quarterback, Ryan Bennett, for Hanover. Great job by North Quincy. It's going to set up a third and long here. It, you know, um, they want to stop him here because if they can stop him here on, uh, on third down, they'll bring up a fourth down, and they'll have to punt because it's just too, it's too much in their territory to go for it on fourth down territory. So... Big third down for the, for the Red Raiders here. They got to stop him. It might go into the air. Player coverage, no down and distance. All right, third and seven now for Hanover. Ball at the 16-yard line. Bennett drops back to pass. Fires is complete. And still on his feet is Devin O'Neill down the right sideline. And finally gets brought out of bounds by number 11, Andrew Kiley. But it will be a big first down for Hanover. It looks like the O'Neal, they look like brothers, Devin and, 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 and Dylan O'Neal, the two Ds. Um, you know, one's a senior, one's a junior. So uh, he, he's a small, on the smaller side, he's the senior, 5'8", 150, where his brother is the junior, and he's younger, but he's 6'2", 175. So the O'Neal brothers have, have done some good, and they got a first down. Antoine Allen had a chance to get him, but, you know, it was tough, tough play. And it's going to go to the fullback. It's number 20, Josh Massey on the carry. And going to get a nice gain up to the 46-yard line, a gain of five. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a junior, 5'10", 165, and um, you know, right up the middle, you know, gain five yards, and you know that's what fullbacks are to, to do, short yardage and gain. You gain more than 3.33 3 3 um, on each carry, you're doing your job because um, you're a fullback, so you know short yardages and... They gave it to him up the middle to, to, to try to, you know, do some other stuff, and now they're going under center instead of out of the pistol. So they've changed their offense around a little bit for the second half. Ivy Cares on the carry. And maybe a yard on the play. We'll see if they get a friendly spot or not. Looks like it's going to be no gain. So third and five for Hanover. And I don't, I don't think that's Hanover's strength. I think they're better in the pistol and move that quarterback around and have him throw the ball around. But, you know, maybe maybe the head coach is trying some other things. Like I said, they're one in five, so they got nothing to lose. They're going to try some, some stuff. So here they go back in the pistol, um, split backs. Third and five. North Quincy comes with a blitz. Bennett fires at the 50-yard line. It's nice complete play. to Devin O'Neill. He's going to break free for some yards. We'll get deeper into North Quincy territory up to the North Quincy 40-yard line, but another big play for Hanover and another first down. Again, it's the Devin O'Neill number one, and uh, you know he's shifty. Um, caught the ball, picked up a couple extra yards, and got the first down. And, you know, and uh, held on to the football. You'll you'll see this on the replay here. Um, watch how low he goes to get this football to catch it right at his knees. He goes down, boom. He's almost down there. Could have called it down, but you know he probably was momentum coming up, and he, and he gains like 10 more yards. So great play, play by uh, Devin O'Neill. And North Quincy's going to have to do a better job with pass coveraging. Full house backfield here now. Brought down by Antoine Allen and Andrew Kiley. Both get on the tackle. Abby Cares uh, trying to get outside. Jumps over one man. Gets up to the 35-yard line. At number 10 is running with some authority. He bounced up after that. Get me back in the huddle. I want. I want the ball again. And uh, so, you know, you like to see what Hanover's doing right now on the coaching standpoint of, of Hanover. Hey, listen, kids, you, you got to give it all out there. Yeah, we're one and five. We're playing North Quincy. They're two and four. I think North Quincy's a better team than two and four. Um, believe it or not. But um, you know, it's tough with the numbers. They've lost a couple close games. But uh, all right, second down and six now for Hanover. And Massey gets a carry again, but he won't go anywhere, it looks like. Coming up on the tackle, Shane Cervales, Cervales, excuse me. And actually, he's going to get a little bit of a gain there on the dive forward. Let's call it a gain of one on the play up to the 35. Yeah, Hanover's uh, eating a little bit away at the clock. He's slowing this game down a little bit. The, the momentum was going in North Quincy's way coming out at halftime and scoring, so... Hanover says, oh, we're going to slow it down a little bit. Let's take our time. Um, let's, 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 you know, run it, run it, run it, pass it, pass it, pass it, run it. So now they're back into under center. So 
And Bennett's going to keep it himself. Broken play. Well, yeah, it looked like it was a broken play, or maybe he was trying to fake everybody out. So he runs it himself, and he's going to be just shy of the first down up to the 31. Broken play, and he still gains three yards. So it's going to bring up a fourth and one, and this is um, very important for North Queens to stop this here. Um, you know, let's see what happens. Um, are they going to go into center handover? Are they going to go in the pistol? Um, they're going to give it to the fullback up the middle. You know, North Quincy might want to take a risk here in, in, in blitz. Um, throw Papadopoulos up there, and uh, if he's in the game, Papadopoulos is on the sideline. Um, but gap responsibilities here. Ooh. And a handoff goes up the middle, and they'll have the first down. They're going to get up to the 29. Elijah Abikares on the carry for a handover. Yeah, North Quincy tried to put a little more size in there, and uh, Kevin Papadopoulos, I wouldn't take him out of the game defensively ever, um, unless he's hurt. And um, they put him back in now, and uh, you know they probably probably put some more size on the line, but I wouldn't take away from that kid's size. He's he's definitely got the heart, and he he can match up against any guy up on that that offensive line. So he's back in there at linebacker. So um, <coughs> they they got the ball, uh, they got the chains moving here for Hanover. First and ten for the Hanover Indians. Spend it. Nothing downfield is going to run it himself. And we'll get hit by Sean Thomas and brought down at the 25-yard line. Vinny Tran also over there to help bring him down as well. When Bennett doesn't see anything, what he does is he just, just starts running and, and he picks up pretty much you know, yardage. I mean, 6'1", um, 190, senior quarterback. You know, you're taught it. You don't have you don't have the open receiver. Why don't you tuck it and run? And that's what he's been doing tonight. And he's done a, he's done a pretty good job with with doing that. So picked up the nice you know five and a half six yards here. So right, Abby Kears gets a carry flag thrown on the play over to the left side at the twenty and is brought down. We'll see what the penalty is. So it's going to be against North Quincy. Where's your spot? Side defense. So it is our sides against North Quincy. Now the question is where. It's going to be a first down, right? Okay. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Offside defense decline. First down. All right, so penalty is declined. Ball goes up to the 18-yard line. First down for a handover. May have been uh, Thomas on the end. He looked like he may have been lined up a little bit on the neutral zone or offsides here. So unfortunate for North Quincy. Keeps the ball rolling here for, uh, for handover. So first and 10 from the 18. And they're going to give it to Abby Cares again. Tries to break up. To the middle of the field, and we'll get to the 15 yard line. Eddie Ginto on the tackle. Ginto does a great job of just getting up there and um, explosiveness of, of, of 10, you know, one on one. I just got to form up and make a good tackle, and that's exactly what he did. So, good job on Ginto's part, just gaining two yards. You know, they're, gonna, they're eating away at this clock. We're getting down to uh, the end of the third quarter here. So That's another big thing. North Quincy needs to stop here and uh, get the ball back. Nice spin move. Abby cares. Issues that's Massey and a whole bunch of North Quincy Raiders come over and bring him down. Ginto over there as well as Antoine, actually Andrew Kiley and Cole Barrett. So gain of one. It's gonna be the last play, so uh, we'll go into the fourth quarter here. All right, so end of the quarter. Hanover leads North Quincy by a score of 21 to 14. And it'll be a third and seven for Hanover when we come back for the fourth quarter. Did you get any update of that Duxbury Hingham game, Jonathan? I know you said there was five minutes left in the in the, in the, yeah, in the I'm game. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking at uh, some tweets right now. Uh, looking at uh, tweets by Sean Brennan, and uh, the game went into overtime. Actually, it tied at seven. Uh, Duxbury got the ball first and was able to go into the end zone, 
And then they held Hingham from scoring. So Duxbury wins in overtime, 14-7. Wow. to seven. Uh, So that's a huge game um, on the Keenan division side of the Patriot League. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. with the win, Duxbury will go to 8-0. and oh, And they have a 34-game winning streak, the longest right now in Massachusetts. Um, the Quincy Presidents were hoping for a Hingham victory there to maybe give them a chance mm -hmm. next week at going in for a three-way tie uh, in the Keenan division. But Duxbury has a clean path now. Um, all they need to do is beat Silver Lake, and uh, they'll be going to, and Whitman Hanson as well, excuse me, and they'll be going back to the playoffs. Yeah, you know, um, I'll tell you, I think it was home field advantage. You go into overtime game, I'm always going to say the home field is definitely the advantage because you got the home field crowd and stuff. So you said there was two botched field goals on Hingham's part where they could have could have could have closed out that game by you know maybe doing something on a field goal or a fake field goal, but they botched both of them, both snaps or whatever, and um, they end up. Yeah, know, there was a uh, yeah, one was a botched snap, and uh, I don't know if the other one was a missed field goal. Not okay, but either way, yeah, Hingham had some chances but couldn't convert. All right, third and seven for hand over here back at the stadium, and North Quincy does a great job to stop the ball carrier. Coming up there, Zach McLaren. And no gain on that run by Abby Cares. Yeah, North Quincy's um, attitude, I would call it, has gotten better here in the second half. You can see the kids getting excited and making tackles and you know, jumping around a little bit more. So, you know, that, that's what you want to see in, the, see in your team is, is, is a reflection going into the second half. Are these kids flying around the football? Are you having some fun? Are you getting excited? And if you're not doing that, you're coming out of the game. And, you know, North Quincy's kids are starting to get a little better here. Right, fourth and seven here. They're going to go back to that fade pass in the end zone and fight for the ball. And it's in, excuse me, intercepted by North Quincy. Great job there. Try and see who intercepted it in the Andrew end zone. McPhail, number yeah, number 22 for North Quincy. That's Matt McPhail, actually. Matt McPhail. Matt oh, McPhail. They, yep. they, they changed that. That was his brother's name. That's right. And uh, I'll tell you, I talked about this kid a little earlier. He had a nice interception a few games ago and ran it. Well, watch this. It's a jump ball, but, you know, there's no height advantage here. This kid's probably Andrew. Matt, I'm sorry. Matt is probably six feet. Maybe, yeah, he's about six feet. He's going against 6'2". So, you know, there's not a huge height advantage, maybe two inches, and he goes up and gets the ball. So great job, um, Mc McPhail here. Uh, uh, great, you know, getting the interception here and giving North Quincy the ball with 10 minutes to go here in the game. All right, so North Quincy takes over, and they're going to give the ball right back to McPhail. Excuse me, that's Eddie Ginto, number 32, not 22. Ginto gets the run, and they're going to get a gain of three on the play, make it four. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna set up Ginto Ginto um, Allen, I guess again, and uh, you know don't don't rule out a little bit of a, of a pass. I, I haven't seen them go too much. I I'd put McPhail back in the game. He's a great great receiver slash you know DB. He's got great hands. I, I they haven't really looked to him tonight. Uh, they got one on one coverage with number twelve on Hanover. And, uh, let's see here. All right, handoff. And Barrett, as you said, gets the carry. And McPhail is one-on-one -on -one with Dustin Gattanio, uh of Hanover, which is a junior, 5'7", 155. So there's, you know, he's got a little bit of a height advantage. I, I'd look to, to, to throw one up. you got to get a first down here. It's third and five here, so you got to get a first down. I'd look to him uh, at some point of the game. They, they really haven't gone to him at all, so he's at the top of the screen here. He's on number 11 right now, Dean Prouty, 5'11". All right, they're looking his way. Mitten looking, looking, fires over the field. Oh, and it looks is like a pass interference. Incomplete. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, here comes the pass is. interference. The back judge threw it. Looked like he might have been over, uh, over his back. Well, I'm glad Coach Connor's listening to me up here because <laughs> <laughs> um, he, 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 the defensive back, um, you'll see. Pass interference, white number 11. Spot foul, automatic, first down. You'll see on the replay here, he gets his hand in there, the defensive back, and you know, we'll take a look at the this, replay. See here, if yep. we can see this right here. His hand, before he goes in for the ball there, his hand is holding 22, so you can't do that five yards down the field. So, great break for North Quincy. And so it's a spot foul, foul, balls at the 36 yard line. So it's a first down. And that was incomplete looking for Barrett. Yeah, 
Now I would look with Antoine Allen. I'd put him at a receiver right now. Put McPhail at the top of the screen. Put Antoine Allen at the bottom of the screen. Unless you want to run him here. It's second down, you, you know. Um, convert him into a, well, they're going to put him in the backfield here, so. Uh-oh. Botch snap. Ball's loose. And it looks like North Quincy was able to recover it, though. Not good to lose the down there. Now it's, it's setting up a third and you know third and long here. Now you know, you're almost forced to 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 pass here because if you run, well they're they're in fourth down territory. Uh, eight eight twenty left in the game. Uh, it's a tough call. We'll see how far they get on this this next con uh, next possession here. They can they get five or six yards to make it. Um, big big play right here for North Quincy. Could be the, the the most important down of the entire game right here up to this point. So. I'd look for Antoine Allen maybe out of the uh, – he's in the trip series. I'd look for him as a receiver. Uh-oh. And pass is complete to Cole Barrett. Great play by Barrett. He and it's going to have to the yard line. It. Enough for a first down. Cole Barrett got underneath this ball and made it an unbelievable play. I'll tell you that Barrett kid – that's another kid you can go to. So – you know, they got the receivers on North Quincy. I, I, they don't have receivers. Cole Barrett is a great receiver. Undersized, just moves to the ball. McPhail's a pretty good receiver. You've got Antoine Allen is a great I mean, If you're down points, you can throw the ball to those three receivers. All right, handover goes up the middle for North Quincy. Eddie Ginto on the carry. He's going to move the pile forward up to the 46. Yeah, if you're going to run, you might as well run to the right. Um, Mitten's a lefty, so if you want need to pass on third down, you run to the wide side of the field here. Um, you know, the ball's on, that, on the left hash of the 46. Run to the right, whatever you can gain. If you need to set up a pass, you, have, you, can, you can go left where the, where, the, where the wide side of the field is left because you've got a lefty in Andrew Mitten, so he's going to be a little bit more better rolling to his left. So you know, let's see what North Quincy does here. McPhail goes wide to the right, Minton back to pass, looking, being pursued, and looking for Barrett down the sideline, and it is incomplete. Nice coverage over there by number one, Devin O'Neill as well for Hanover. It's tough, like I was just talking about the rolling out. You know, Minton's a lefty. He's going to roll out to your right. He's getting pressure, and he, he tries to just kind of come back and throw that ball. It was a difficult throw for him, and Cole Barrett almost closed in and made the, made the, made the completion, but... Third down here, third and six. It is fourth down territory, so they can run on this this down. Um, but you know, if he's going to roll out to his left, he's at the short side of the field. So, six thirty-seven left to go in the ball game. And I like this. You go to the pistol, double, um, double, uh, double slot. And they got hand off to Antoine Allen up to make sure. No, Minton keeps it himself. Has the forty-yard nice line and a great second effort for Andrew Minton jumping over number fifty-two. Uh, Hunter Smith and Minton will get the first down. I really do like what Coach Connor just did. Uh, take him out of under center. We're going to look at this. It's a great fake. They go in a double, double slot. Minton fakes it to Allen. Everybody thinks it's going to him, and he gains the first down. I like it. I like pistol offenses every once in a while. Switch it up in, in, in other center, and they did a great job. Great, great job on the coaching staff. Again, that second effort there by Minton to pick up the first down was huge. All right, passing the backfield goes to Antoine Allen. He's got some room. Cross the 35 and will fall forward. You see where they've swapped the ball at the 32, it looks like. Now they're setting up for Allen. You, you got to use all your weapons on the team. You know, you, you got Ginto, you got Allen, you got McPhail, you got Cole Barrett. Let's we'll take a look at the replay real quick in here, Noel. As uh, you can see, the ball was uh, thrown behind him. Um, he threw, it was a backwards pass, excuse me, but nice effort by Allen. So second down in two now. Mitten rolling out to his left, fires downfield, and incomplete was looking for Matt McPhail. He had Ginto in the flats. He tried to go for the home run there. Um, you could have went to Ginto. He only needed, you know, second and two, second and three, and um, you could have got the first down. But he tried to go for the home run, and, you know, try to put the, the ball in, in the air and get, get a score here. And it's, it's worth a shot to get it because now it brings up, you know, second, second and two, second and three. So uh, actually third now. So. Not a bad little try to go deep, but you know you had Ginto, Ginto in the flats.
Yeah, they're spotting the ball. Third and two. And off the Ginto, and he is hammered in the backfield. He had nowhere to go. He got the ball, Noel, and a split second later, he was getting hit. And going to be no gain, it looks like. We'll bring it fourth down for North Quincy. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that play call. You don't even have a lead blocker for you. You know, he's the, he's the, basically the one back, and you don't have a lead blocker to make make any room for you to run. You have to find the hole yourself. So, you know, um, fourth, fourth and two here. They got to convert here to keep it going. All right, Mitten has it to Ginto right up the middle. Nice That's play to, to Antoine Allen. Allen over to the right side, crosses the 25, and will pick up the first down. Faked out everybody on that play right there. Looked like it was going right up to Ginto, as we're going to see in the replay here. Yeah, Antoine Allen scored on this last time. And it, you know, faked it to Ginto up the middle, Antoine Allen on the outside. Yeah, I'd give it to Allen on a fourth down anywhere on the field and, and see if he can make it, the playmaker. So, um, you know, it, it, North is, is driving here. It's 4.55 4 and, and ticking. Um, they got to punch it in here on this series. Antoine Allen, 129 yards rushing here tonight with one touchdown. Ginto up the Ginto. middle this time, and nice job by him. Falls forward, and will get inside the 15 up to the 14-yard line, it looks like. I like the play call here. They put Antoine Allen in motion. He goes in as the lead blocker. So he, he goes basically in, and uh, they run it to the left side of the, you know, the tackle or, or the guard, and he's the lead blocker. So you, now you have somebody to help you lead and find a hole for him. So great play call there. You know, Second and two here, they're driving. Uh, they're getting down on the 13-yard line here. Is that right? Uh, they're at the 14. 14. Need to get to the 12 for the first down. Get to again on the carry. Over to the left side. Yeah. And he has the first down. Gets inside the 10 up to the 9-yard line. Great job by Ginto again. You know, if you throw the ball, you can set up the run. If you, if you run the ball, you can set up the pass. You have to do both. You, you just can't come out and just say, oh, I'm just going to run the ball every down. And, and what North Quincy's done, uh, we'll, we'll see this on the replay here. They've, they've passed and they've run. That's the last replay here um, of, of, of Antoine Allen getting in there and making the lead block. But this is, this is the way an offense kind of kind of rolls. You don't know where they're going. So good job by North Quincy. All right, first and goal from the nine. 3.40 left to go. Antoine Allen in motion, gets the carry, and he'll fall forward to get up to the six. Great job by Allen. It looked like he was stopped in the backfield. He gained an extra three yards out of that by falling forward and momentum. Um, so gain of three on that play, so second and goal. I wouldn't rule out a passing play in here. You could do it here on second down. They're running the ball pretty well, but do a little bit of a bootleg action. Um, let's see here. Where's the tight end? On the top of the screen here, so. All right, Matt McPhail goes wide to the left. And going to be Cole Barrett. Cole Barrett at the five. Ooh. And fighting his way forward. And no, they're going to say he's down at the one-yard line. I would go with I-formation, Ginto with the fullback, and give it to Allen up the middle. I mean, you got two plays to make it in here. Um, 2.46 in the ball, and the, tick is clock, the clock is ticking, so. Yeah, this is perfect for North Quincy. Come down here, hopefully score a touchdown as the clock keeps on ticking down. So third and goal from inside the one. Three receivers, uh, three running backs, and Minton's going to keep it himself. Is he in? I say still no signal. It looked like he had jumped over the line. He's in. And touchdown, North Quincy. He's in. Took a little while to call it, but Andrew Minton runs it in, and North Quincy gets on the board, and with an extra point to come, we can tie it. Are they going to go for the two-point conversion here? I say at home, sometimes you do that, so we'll see what happens. And I, timeout's going to be called by North Quincy, so they can discuss what happens here. Uh, we've seen some uh, troubles with them um, on the extra point. Uh, that might be one of the reasons why they've been going for two. Uh, let's take a look at the replay here of the touchdown run by Andrew Mitten. Nice and quarterback sneak. You find a little hole, you know, you get in it, and uh, Andrew Mitten did a great job. And I saw when there was, like, basically three-man backfield. They're all, you know, Barrett. Ginto and Allen. I says, oh, I don't really like this formation. And then they go with the quarterback sink. So great job. I would kick it because if, if you, I'd try to kick it. I mean, you have to have a good enough place kicker to do this and tie it up. If you have to go into overtime, you go into overtime. You have the home field advantage. The momentum's going your way. You're down 21-6 at halftime, and the momentum, you know, they ha you, Hanover hasn't scored in the second half here. So I would go with the extra point. 
Um, North Quinn's going to talk it over, see if they want to go for the two-point conversion to win the game. Well, there's still time left, but, you know, to put them ahead. Yeah, it's looking like they are going to go for two. So it's 21-20 with the, again, with the conversion to come. All right, what's going to go for it? Hanover sidelines going crazy over there, the Hanover side. All right, the crowd on this side is getting pumped up here, too. The North Quincy players trying to get the crowd going here. Good crowd here at Veterans Memorial Stadium here tonight. Andrew Minton under center. And he's going to fake it to Antoine Hill, and he puts it in. Great play call. And, uh, yeah, they faked the handoff to Eddie Ginto, and Allen was open in the flat for the two-point conversion. Also, Jonathan, you, you also also think you know, extra point might not make it. You might not kick it wrong. You know, and, and you know they did a great job on getting that two-point conversion. You know, um, gut check time for North Quincy, and they did a great job. They're up by one point. Two twenty-one left in the game. Um, Hanover's going to get the ball. Let's take a look at the replay, Noel, and see that great fake by uh, Andrew Minton. Ginto goes up the middle. Allen just slipped out, and he had he could walk it in from right there. There was no one around him. And North Quincy comes back, a great drive, and they go up now 22 to 21. Great job by splitting the ball up to all these kids. I mean, that's the only way you're going to get Allen his touches is by splitting the ball up, and they're not going to know they're going to go to him. You, know, you just can't give him the ball every down either. So, you know, they set it up. Cole Barrett set it up. Ginto set it up. And, and Mitten took it in, and then Antoine Allen scored the two-point conversion. So they spread the ball out, and it's really important because Hanover didn't know where the ball, you know, who's who the key on, you know, and that's what you want to do in your offensive scheme is, is spread the ball out, um, let other kids make some plays, and, and, you know, Cole Barrett, I'll tell you, I'll talk about him again. He, he, great job, just great job getting in there on the one, you know, made a, made a great catch down here on the 50, set everything up. All right, North's going to kick it deep. Fielded by Hanover at the 14-yard line. And Devin O'Neill with a carry up the middle. Ball comes loose. Ball Looks comes like loose. Looks it. like North Quincy has it. And they do. North Quincy picks it up. Great job by North Quincy here. You know, I see totally different team out here right now the second half. And I talked about, you know, we'll watch this replay here. And, you know, uh, one's trying to get a little extra room and run. And, and uh, we'll see who gets a hand in on here. So a little bit of it in the wedge here. Gets in. Thomas, number 81. So great job there by Sean Thomas. And again, North Quincy recovers. They got to get a first down here and um, keep the ball moving. All right, so 22-21 North Quincy, and they're back on offense after the fumble. Eddie Ginto on the carry. He crosses the 35. We'll get up to the 33. And timeout's called by Hanover. So Hanover's strategy here is to stop them on four down, four, uh, four tries, use their timeouts now. North Quincy is going to try to eat it up and get a first down. You get a first down, basically the game's going to be over. All right, spot the ball at the 34-yard line. But you have to hold on to the football. You just never know if there will be a fumble out there. So. All right, so great effort there by North Quincy on special teams to force the fumble. They recover, and now they have a second down and seven. Cole Barrett gets the carry, and nice effort by Barrett just to maybe get a guard. He was all the way back to the 40. Looked like it might have been a loss on the play, and instead he's going to turn it into a little bit of a positive there. And actually they're going to say it's a no gain at the 34. And dangerous play to pull Barrett way back in the backfield like that. He loses five yards and it's going to be difficult to make a first down. So, you know, if the good thing Barrett made it back to the line of scrimmage, otherwise he loses five yards. It, it sets up a third and long. So now it's a third and you know six here. So let's see. Let's see what the Red Raiders do. Um, you know, I like they were running something up the middle and Antoine Allen to the outside. They, they could set that up again here. Um, it looks like it's coming here. So. Let's see what happens. All right, so like you said, Noel, North Quincy would love to get a first down here and try to put this ball game away. Ginto on the carry up the there middle. It is. There it is. I think he's again. gone. They've been fooling me all night on that. And he's going to go all the way for the touchdown. Antoine Allen 
runs it in, and North Quincy, after that 34-yard touchdown run, now goes up 28 to 21. Wow. I knew it was coming, John, and I could see the formation. I'm saying to myself, that's the play you want to play because we'll put this on the replay here. Antoine Allen, let's give him the football, the playmaker. Outside, just barely gets that. Mitten gets the handoff, barely there. It was kind of like a, you know, a fast inside handoff to Ginto and then give it to Allen and let him burst it in. And you know, He runs well in the open field, so that's going to push it. Um, you know, are they going to gonna go for the two-pointer here? Or? Yeah, it looks like it. So it's 28-21, uh, and North will go for the two-point conversion. And they're going to go same play. This is Barrett. Good. Barrett this time. Look at and that. He should be in, and he is. Cole Barrett with a two-point conversion. So make it 30-21, to 21, North Quincy. Wow, what a comeback here by North Quincy to march down the field, force the turnover on the kickoff, and they run it in. Big eight points for North Quincy with 143 left to go in the ballgame. That point, two-point conversion by Cole Barrett puts it a two-possession game. Great play of the kid. Kid, he looks like he's stopped in the backfield, and the kid just runs it in. I mean, so elusive, and you know, he gets under those 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 um, big offensive linemen, and, and he just kind of squeezes in there and makes some great plays. I mean, these these kids um, came out second half. They're down 21-6. They've put up what's this? 24 points. Done a great job. Um, We'll take a look at the replay on the two-point conversion, and North Quincy has really gone and uh, done really done a great job on those fake handoffs. And uh, Hanover has been fooled by them. Cole Barrett punches it in. Cole Barrett knows down and distance. I got to get in the end zone. Any way to get in, <laughs> and he's dove in a few times here. So great job by Barrett, and um, you know North Quincy doing a great job. And uh, what they need to do is just close us out, get good coverage on here, maybe get another fumble. <laughs> Yeah, they would love that. And it's going to be kicked. Let's see if it goes out of bounds, and it does. So we'll have a flag on the play there. Goes out of bounds to the 31. Good thing they made the two-point conversion here because it's going to give them a little extra field position, and they stops the clock. So very important two-point conversion by Cole Barrett. Oh, they're going to re-kick. They took him out of the game. They put somebody else in, I think, as the kicker. So, going to try to go for maybe some distance here. All right, so five-yard penalty. And Mecky Pearson comes in to kick now. We didn't have the other kicker's number. It was number 39. Previously, he was kicking, and, and unfortunately, he's not on our roster. And this one might go out of bounds as well, mm. and it does. So North Quincy trying to kick the ball straight up the field and unfortunately cannot right now. I don't think they have a kicker over there that can place kick, but you have enough athletes, you know, the Cole Barretts, the Antoine Allens, Ginto. One of those kids has got to be able to kick the football into the goalposts. One of them has to. You, know. you can go, I mean, at this level, you can still do straight on if you have to, kick it with your toes, but... You know, most of the kids are side side kicks, but somebody's got to step up and and try to try to convert some kicks here. Uh, playing a Hanover team, you make a lot of two point conversions, but going into the regular into the rest of the season here, especially if they want to get ready for Thanksgiving Day game, you know, Quincy Quincy's probably going to be a little stronger down by the goal line there with those big kids on the defensive line. So they got to find a kicker. And this one goes up the middle and field at the 35 yard line by Hanover. And nice pursuit here by North Quincy. And going to get to the 44. That's number 11, Dean Prouty. And again, they mark it at the 44-yard line. 133 left to go in the ball game. Again, North Quincy on top, 30 to 21. North Quincy calls a timeout. So pretty much here, Noel, it's, uh, you know, make sure nothing gets over your head mm -hmm. or behind behind your back. Uh, make sure everything stays in front of you there. Knock those balls down and uh, just make sure uh, your uh, receiver doesn't get behind you. Yeah, setting up for next week, they could play at Whitman Hanson. You know, Quincy played them um, 
uh, last, two weeks ago and beat them 32-6. to six And, uh, they, you know, they, you want to be setting up for, for, for the Thanksgiving Day game. You know, they got Whitman Hansen in another week, and then the, the following week they got Pembroke. So uh, Whitman Hansen start off the season really good, and they've lost a few games in there, so they have a good chance. But they're on the road for the two games. So they're on Whitman Hansen, and they're at Pembroke, and then they come back home here to the same. So we won't see them back here until Thanksgiving Day um, Quincy North Quincy rivalry. So, you know. Yeah, the next game QA TV will be covering will be on Friday, November 9th, when Quincy hosts Silver Lake, uh, and then Thanksgiving on the 22nd of November. Our right, first and 10 for Hanover, and ball is batted down. Looked like it was Vinny Tran who knocked that down. Great job by Vinny Tran. Get your hands up and knock it down. You know, I could hear them up here yelling and, and having some fun. They're high-fiving each other, and, and that's what you ask for of your team. If you're not flying around the football and you're not having fun, not high-fiving each other, come out of the game because you shouldn't be in there if you're not ready to play. And, you know, North Quincy has done a great job second half. Coach Connor, Ken McPhee, Mark Nutley was probably all over in the locker room, and, and the kids came out and played second half. And second down and 10, passes complete. Number one on the carry, Devin O'Neill on reception, excuse me, and he's going to go all the way up oh, to the 35-yard line. Uh, he's talking about maybe someone grabbed him by the neck or something, but um, number one, Devin O'Neill. Spot the ball at the 32-yard line. feisty here, so probably doesn't like it. You know, 21-6 at halftime, and now you're... You're, uh, you're losing, so. All right, timeouts called by Hanover. Referees did a great job with saying, hey, listen, none of that. I don't want to call penalties on either, either side, you know, an offset or anything. Just settle down, play clean football, you know. Real quick, while we have a moment, Antoine Allen, 166 yards rushing on 11 attempts for North Quincy, he has two touchdowns. Also, Eddie Ginto has 48 yards rushing. Cole Barrett has four receptions for 60 yards, including a touchdown. Andrew Minton is 5 for 11 passing for 68 yards and that one touchdown pass. Ryan Bennett, 11 for 17 for Hanover, the quarterback, for 193 yards and three touchdowns. Um, Elijah Ivy Cares has 74 yards rushing. And Josh Massey has 22 yards rushing. And then they have four receivers who have been effective in the receiving game. Devin O'Neill with 63 yards. Dylan O'Neill, 65 yards and a touchdown. Elijah Ivy Cares, uh, one reception for 30 yards. And Chris Rosinski has 35 yards on four receptions and two touchdowns. Then it back to pass again, and it's complete this time to Devin O'Neill. And he's going to get a gain of one or two on the play. And Hanover calls another timeout. You know, Hanover switched up their offense a little bit in the second half, and they were they came out in the first half, and they were really throwing the football, and they were being very effective. And then they went back to, to, to running the football, and they didn't really run number 10 that well. And I thought they should have stuck with the pistol offense and, and aired it out. I mean, you still got nothing to lose. They played a little bit more on the conservative style. They ate up a lot of the clock in the third quarter, but they didn't score. And, and then the North Quincy got the ball, and they just, they just put it in. So, you know... Um, you know, being up that many points, two or three touchdowns, is never never enough in, in high school football. You know, your whole half, second half to go, and your kids can put up scores. And North Quincy, they do a pretty good job of putting putting points up. You know, it's just defending as well. So North Quincy's got to get a little better on defense. Offensively, I think they're explosive. they got a lot of weapons, and, um, you know, uh, Coach Connor's done a great job. Defensively, it might be the factor of the legs. You know, they got a lot of kids going both ways, and they're still out there in the field right now, so... Um, my second down eight for Hanover. I believe they have no timeouts left, but I could be wrong on that. Pass is complete to a wide open uh -oh. number seven, nice, nice Dylan O'Neill. And they have no timeouts left. They're going to have to rush the ball up. Antoine Allen made a great tackle there. The kid was going to get in the end zone, and Allen tackled him very well. So Ball's marked at the 18-yard line. Back to pass again, and it is incomplete. Number 12, Dustin Vitagliano was the intended receiver. Yeah, 
Yeah, just a little word for the handover guy over there. Just continue to, to pass the ball. The teams you're playing next, you know, air it out. Kids, good good receivers over there. Good receivers. Switch it up with 10 running, and quarterback can, can get elusive. So, Second down to 10. Fire the ball over the middle, and incomplete went through the hands of his intended receiver. Oh, look, it was number one, Devin O'Neill on the intended receiver. So bring up a third and 10 now for handover. We're at 49 seconds left to go. Handover out of timeouts. All right, North Quincy in a semi prevent here, you know, using the field to their advantage. Um, extra extra um, DB in here, number 45 helping them out. Bottom of the screen here. A third and 10 pass is incomplete, was intended for number 88. Chris Rosinski went through his hands and falls incomplete. So bring up now a fourth down and 10 for Hanover. North Quincy stops them here. They get the ball and you know, basically can down it and the game is over. So, Yeah, if North gets it here, that's the end of the ball game. North Quincy calls a timeout to discuss a few things. 45 and a half seconds left. North Quincy on top by a score of 30 to 21 here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, the Coach Ken McPhee is talking to Cole Barrett and telling him, you know, this is the kid you need to watch out for. They got to make it to the eight yard line to make a first down. So let's just stop them there. Know where you are. Watch what they're going to throw. So. Yeah, pretty much it's give them eight or nine yards, but not 10 right now. It right. doesn't really matter. No, no touchdown, obviously, either. All right, so fourth and 10. Bennett back to pass, fires over the right side of the field, and it's incomplete. And North Quincy's going to win this ball game. Cole Barrett, a nice job on defense there to break up that play. Great job by Barrett. You know, he he, he he could be the captain out there for the for the defensive squad. And, you know, Mitten's going to come in here and probably down it and uh, go home with a win. So great job by North Quincy second half. And um, they came out totally different team. They came out flat in the first half. I kept on saying, what are these kids doing? And they're just not, not with it. They're not clicking. They're not on any cylinders. And they come out second half and, and score some touchdowns. So good job. All right, so Andrew Mitten will just uh, nail this ball down. And that should be enough to end the ball game. So great job here by North Quincy again, coming back, fighting back in this ball game. The, uh, we're down, fought back, came down in the fourth quarter, scored a couple of big touchdowns. The, uh, really the biggest play was on that kickoff uh, where they forced a fumble. Sean Thomas, they forced fumble. And um, that was really a big turning point. North Quincy was able to go down, score another touchdown. And, and wrap it up. And not only that, they went down and scored three touchdowns, but they had three two-point conversions. So that made it a two-possession game by making that last one with Cole Barrett. So that was the biggest play right there, was making that extra two-point conversion to allow it to be a two-possession game, in which Hanover could have scored there if they were down you know, an extra point, went for the two-point conversion. So great job by North Quincy and Cole Barrett making that two-point conversion at the end. Yeah, no, they had to go 64, they had to go to 79 yards, 64 yards, 37 yards. So they got three possessions in a row and they go through three touchdowns. So really great job there by North Quincy again to, to come up with the big plays when they needed them and uh, to come up with a big victory here at home. Things were a little in limbo there for a little while. Uh, again, it, it really should have been 30 to 14 as well. And we'll go back to that, that at the end of the second quarter, Hanover was driving down the field. And uh, it was just a miscue down the field by um, uh, the person that was doing the uh, yard marker, the down marker, excuse me. Uh, and Hanover got a couple of free extra plays. They had two fourth down plays, essentially. Uh, it should have been a fifth down, if you will. And uh, they took advantage of it going in and scoring that touchdown. But either way, nonetheless, North Quincy comes back. Big victory here at the stadium, uh, fighting their way forward. Um, Antoine Allen finishes with 166 yards, 48 yard run and, and two touchdowns. So great job by him. Andrew Minton he had a 68 yards passing and one touchdown. Cole Barrett had a touchdown reception as well. And they were able to hold Elijah Abbey Cares, the lead running back for Hanover to 74 yards. Looked like early in the game he was going to be running all over the place. Had a lot of yards early, but North did a nice job later on in the game, especially in the second half, to really shut him down and, uh, and falsely shut down the passing game as well. A lot of passing yards in the early of the first half, Noel, and uh, at halftime a lot of adjustments must have been made. 
Great job by North Quincy to win this game. They're going to go to Whitman Hanson and then Pembroke on the road for both games. They're going to set up the Thanksgiving Day Classic, the 80, 80th year, by the way, Jonathan. So uh, it's a big game. They're they're wearing their black 80th um, you know jerseys, and the, and the yep. Quincy's going to wear the white with the with the blue numerals. So. It's going to be nice new jerseys for both teams, and it's going to be a nice 80th anniversary. Also today, Quincy won earlier, and then North Quincy won. So you got both schools winning. Really, really, really nice for the for, for, for the Quincy Quincy area, um, you know, local people around here that both teams won. Um, yeah, so we certainly like to have a double victory here on yeah. the, on the, on the, on the, uh, the doubleheader. Uh, real quick, we want to thank all of our crew for coming out here tonight and making this production possible. On camera, we have Peter Doherty, Glenn Busher, and Jeff Mann. On audio, Anna El Torre. On graphics, Bill Early. Our technical director was Grace Busher. Our director, George Capadonna. Our engineer, Chris Potter. Our executive producer, Elizabeth Campbell. So uh, we're off next week on November 2nd. No, we're back here at the stadium on November 9th when Quincy will play Silver Lake. And that is the last game here at the stadium until Thanksgiving. You can watch QA TV on Thanksgiving morning and listen to live audio coverage pregame at 9.30 a.m., kickoff at 10 a.m. For more information as Thanksgiving gets closer, you can log on to www.qatv.org. So again, final score here at the stadium, North Quincy Red Ray is 30, the Hanover Indians 21. North Quincy improves now to 3-4 and four on the year. One and two in the division. For Noel Dapona, my name is Jonathan Caleri. Thank you for watching this edition of QA TV Sports. We'll see you next time.